Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is a video that has been requested many times over. I'm finally getting to it. Um, this is going to be how I audiobook. It's verb now. Um, no, this is just going to be all of the programs that I use to listen to audiobooks, how I get through a lot of books on my shelves, in my actual like online libraries. So this is going to be just kind of a how-to guide for all of the programs that I personally like using. And I will say first and foremost that listening to audiobooks counts as reading. We'll get that disclaimer out of the way. If you disagree with me, uh, you can just skedaddle because that is basically how I consume a lot of my books these days. Probably 75% of what I read is audiobooks these days. And that is primarily because I'm lucky enough to have a job that I can listen to a book while I'm there every day. So I have a lot of listening time available to me. Um, and I also listen at a very fast speed. I might make a video about that going forward. I have an old video about how I get through all of the reading that I get through, just about how I increase the speed over the years to like acclimate to it. But this is primarily going to be the programs that I use. And there are a lot. Everybody has their own preferences. Um, I use pretty much all of them, to be honest, just because I go through so many audiobooks. So I try and get like my money's worth across the board every month. So first thing that I'm going to recommend to you guys is the free option. And this I guess is a little known option to most people who are getting into audiobooks. Um, your library. I'm not talking like books on tape, books on CD, uh, digital, digital audiobooks. So every library system basically has an overdrive or overdrive is being phased out and is being transferred completely to Libby. And I'm still heartbroken over this because I'm used to overdrive, but it is what it is. Um, I think some library systems use Access 360. I am not sure how like international library systems work. And a lot of libraries also use Hoopla. So all of these things, I'm going to try and actually, you know what, I'll scooch over. I'll try and put things on the screen here. Um, so I primarily learned in Overdrive. So I personally browse on Overdrive, but I listen in Libby. It is the same program. Um, and I believe as of like this year, they're going to be completely phasing out Overdrive and everything will be accessible on Libby. I personally just like browsing on Overdrive. It's more user intuitive, I think, but I periodically go on and check my library catalogs and I will just go to the advanced search option and I will go to the format and I will select MP3 audiobook and it will show you all of the recent uploads or releases of audiobooks that are available and you can place them on hold if they aren't available or you can borrow them. Again, it's a library system. It's completely free. Um, but I do prefer to listen on Libby because Libby lets you listen at a faster playback speed than Overdrive does. That was a, a thing that I realized once I got up to a higher listening speed. So that allows you to go through smaller increments and faster playback speeds, which is something that is important to me as somebody who listens at a fast pace. I have a hard time going back down to normal speeds. So both of those are free. Um, I know my one county uses Access 360, which is kind of harder to use. And I find that a lot of smaller library systems use that. Um, it's not as accessible, I think, as uh, Libby is, but it'll still do the trick. So those apps are going to be specific to your library's catalog. So if your library system has a really big catalog, another one might not be. I personally have library cards in the past three counties that I've lived in. I've moved a lot. Um, so I have library cards through the county that I live in, the last county I lived in, and where I grew up. Um, and the one that I grew up in has the biggest selection. It's closer to Philly. And I feel like the closer to a city you are, the better selection your library catalog is going to be. But again, all of this is going to be specific to your library. That being said, a lot of libraries also use Hoopla, which is a separate app, separate program um, that is a universal library. But every individual library system basically purchases allotments, I guess, is a good word to use. Um, so every library system basically allows the users of Hoopla to check out a certain number of titles. And this is also going to be a case where the closer to a major city you are, the more you're going to be allowed to check out every month and the more rural you are, at least this is what I found, the less credits that you're going to get each month. So again, this is all library stuff. So this is all going to be a borrowing system. So you're going to be able to download things to your phone, listen to them and then return them. Um, same thing with Hoopla, you get allotted so many credits a month um, to download things and listen to them and return them at the end of the month. 
So uh, my library system did away with Hoopla last year and I am still heartbroken over it. I'm still not over it. Let's not talk about it. Um, but this is a universal catalog that uh, every library system basically buys rights into. So like I said, this is going to be um, a system where like if you're in a very big city, if you live in LA or in New York City and you have a library card to those library systems, you're probably going to be able to check out like 20 plus titles a month. Meanwhile, little old me who lives in like Amish country, Pennsylvania, I think I got three checkouts each month. Um, and that was painful. But uh, and then my library just got rid of Hoopla. They didn't want to spend the money to buy in those rates. So that is another free program to you guys. You basically have almost unlimited access to all of these titles for free. So that is where I'm going to push a lot of you guys to start with audiobooks before you start like investing money into it. So those are the free programs. Okay, we're gonna go up in price as I go here. Um, the next system slash app that I have been fairly new to and I've still been like figuring out if I like it or not is Chirp. So Chirp is its own audio player app system thing, but it's one of those programs. It's similar to BookBub if you guys are subscribed to BookBub where you get daily emails of audiobooks that happen to be on sale and you can buy them through Chirp and listen through that app. Um, and it, I found really good deals. Like you'll find stuff that is on sale for like $1.99, $2.99, um, which is infinitely cheaper than most credit systems are. Um, it's not super easy to search and browse, but it is somewhere that you can find good titles if you're like me and you are a ferocious audiobook listener and you kind of constantly need a backlog of things to get through. Um, it is a cool thing to look at. I am still fairly new to it. I only started using it like eight-ish months ago, so I'm still kind of working the kinks out of this because um, I have been so used to the programs that I've used for so long, so this is a new transition for me. So that is a cheap option for you uh, and it's basically just a daily email of like depending on what genres you select your preferences to be, it'll give you like 10 to 20 books that happen to be on sale for a really good deal. So that is a thing to look out for. The next tier I would consider price-wise would be Scribd. So let's talk about Scribd. I have been using Scribd since Scribd was a very new program. Um, I used it back when it was actually unlimited and before it got very, very popular because of the book community. So Scribd is in unlimited subscription service, similar to Audible, similar to Libro FM, similar to any of the paid services. Um, and back when it started, it was truly unlimited. You could, you paid, I think it's $8.99 a month, which is cheaper than an Audible credit. It's cheaper than most audiobooks. Um, so you pay a monthly fee and you get to browse their entire catalog and borrow the books from their system. You don't get to own the books forever like you do in Audible or Libro or something like that. Um, but as somebody who just kind of churns through audiobooks, that isn't necessarily important to me. I don't have a lot of books that I have like reread value for. So Scribd, as it gained popularity though, kind of realized that they didn't have enough royalty to a lot of the titles that they had there. So while they pitch it as being unlimited, you generally only get so many um, like new release best-selling titles every single month. And then the unlimited part is your account will kind of lock until your next bill cycle, um, but you still have access to like older titles. So if you know how to like work their system, it can work well. And I personally feel like it's kind of like a marketing scheme type of thing. Um, but if you're not a huge audiobook listener, honestly, Scribd to me is the prime deal compared to Audible or anything like that. Because if you don't listen to more than like five audiobooks a month, you're going to get your money's worth out of Scribd and you'll have an endless selection. Um, but my issue is the fact that if you happen to listen to a seemingly varying amount each month, like some months I feel like I'll get like six or seven really big titles and other months I'll get like one or two before it locks my account out which is frustrating to me. Um, but it is kind of always like a backup program that I like using. Um, so that's kind of like the, the pros and cons of it is it's unlimited, but it's not unlimited, you know? So I use that as like kind of a 
backup place before I buy a title on Audible. I'll check to see if it's available on Scribd and I'll just like save it to my wish list so that when it becomes available to me, I can listen to it instead of purchasing it on a different app. My only downfall with Scribd is that it does only go up to two times the playback speed, but that is the downfall if you are a very, very fast audiobook listener. It does only go up to two times. So that is something to note as well. But I do feel like they have a fairly good selection in general. I feel like they tend to get new release titles very, very quickly. So it is a good option if you are not like a ferocious reader. So I tend to use Scribd as like a backup account compared to all of my other stuff. Okay, moving in to the more well-known, the pricier audiobook program. So I'm going to talk about Audible and I'm going to talk about Libro FM. So Audible, is owned by the Amazon gods. So if that is something that is iffy for you, um, obviously I'm going to steer you to Libro FM because that is an alternative to Audible that is comparable in price, comparable in title selection, but without the guilt of sending all of your money to the Amazon. But that being said, let me give you some tips and tricks on how to work the system for Audible. So Audible I'm sure you guys all know, is owned by Amazon. It's their audiobook program. You get to purchase books and own them forever. Even if you cancel your subscription, you get to keep them forever. That's one of the perks. Um, it is a subscription service per credit. So I believe it's $15 a month for one credit. And I think there's an option for $22 where you can get two credits every month. Um, and both of these, I believe, come with the Plus catalog. The Plus catalog is not great. It used to be so much better. There used to be an entire romance Plus catalog that they did away with that just hurt my little romance reading heart. Um, and the Plus catalog is kind of hard to navigate. It's very hard to browse new titles that are added. It's not the most recent selections. It's very specific authors will show up again and again and again. Um, so the plus catalog is hit or miss. That's an additional like unlimited subscription on top of the credits that you get. And it's basically what Amazon deems as included in it that I think changes periodically. So I only have the one credit audible option just because I don't want to contribute more money to it. Um, and I usually save that one credit for a big audiobook purchase. So something that is a long audiobook, something that is a very expensive audiobook, um, because to me that credit is worth that $15 fee. $13? $14. How much is Audible these days? I feel like it did increase. Oh, okay, okay. So you can just get the Plus program for $7.95 a month. I don't think that's worth it, I'm gonna be honest, because that's almost equivalent to what Scribd is, and Scribd has way better title selection. Um, then there's the Audible Premium Plus that is $14.95 a month. So that is the credit plus access to the Plus catalog, which is what I get. And then there is the Premium Plus, which is two credits, which is $22.95 plus Audible Plus. Okay. Okay. That makes sense to me. So to me, that one credit is worth $15. So I try and always use that one credit on an expensive audiobook because audiobooks can honestly go up to like $30, $40 for the really big titles that are very long. And there might be like dual narration, like high production prices. So I try and hoard that one credit each month for like a big purchase. Um, I'm not always successful with it, to be honest, but that is my recommendation. Um, and they do always have the option where you can purchase like a bundle of three credits for 33 something plus tax. So it ends up being like each credit is like 11 something dollars. Um, and to me, that is the same thing in my brain where I try to use those three credits for things that are over $12, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, or if it happens to be like an Audible exclusive title, like it, the audiobook is only available on Audible, I'll use those credits for that because I'm bitter that they have rights to it and I can't listen to it elsewhere. But if it's a series that I'm in the middle of and I need to like get the rest of them, I'll use those. So that is an option that I have done a few times over the years. I'll, I'll buy like the extra bundle thing if I'm like desperate to get through a series. But here is the like use and abuse audible recommendations that I have for you. Um, their sales. They do a lot of sales. Um, I'm going to highly recommend like actually getting the emails from Audible because that's how you'll find out about the sales or just periodically going on the actual Audible website, not the app, go on the actual website. Um, and there will be a banner at the top. Usually it's like a rectangle banner. Um, and it'll, it'll say whatever their sale happens to be if they're doing one. And a lot of the times those sale prices are so worth it. And I 
totally take advantage of it. I know a lot of you guys did with this last sale because it's the best that I've ever seen. Their entire website was up to like 85% off. So most titles were under $5 and I was, I lost my ever loving mind. So that is my recommendation is to check out sales, like take advantage of audible sales when they happen. Um, I use that to stock up on series. I use that to stock up on like authors backlists that I know that I'm going to listen to. Um, and that is the main deal. I feel like a lot of times they will do series starting sales. So they will um, put a lot of like book one of a series on sale. And most of the sales will be around like $5.98 is like the common price. It'll range anything from like $10 down. Um, and that is to me way worth it. So this last sale that everything was like 85% off, I bought entire series for the price of like one credit because a lot of titles were on sale for like $3. So I bought like five books for the price of one credit, if that makes sense. So that's, that was my logic for taking advantage of the sale. Yes, Amazon got a lot of my money and I'm not proud of that fact, but I got so many audiobooks and they're yours forever. You, like even if you cancel your subscription, you get to keep those books forever. So that is the main perk of Audible. And that is how I'm going to recommend using and abusing. Um, they do daily deals. I get those emails. And a lot of the times it'll be very hit or miss because there are how many hundreds of thousands of audiobooks that exist in the world and they will pick one to go on sale for a, a significantly cheaper price. It's usually around $5. Um, and sometimes it'll be up your alley. Most of the time it won't. But honestly, I have, I have bought their daily deals sometimes because sometimes it happens to be an author that I really like. So that's my recommendation for Audible. Now there is a way to technically exchange credits, but I'm going to kind of steer you guys away from that because they've gotten very, very stingy with their return policies, but you can return or exchange titles. Um, and a lot of this will be just a preference thing. Like when you select why you're returning it, you can say like, I didn't like the book. Um, I didn't like the narrator. Something was wrong with it. I bought it by mistake. And I've done that a few times over the years over books that I just, I DNF for whatever reason, and you can get that credit back. But Audible gets very, very picky with when they allow you to do that. And I feel like this year in particular, they took the rights away from a lot of people, even if you haven't returned anything recently. Um, and it's month to month. Like I feel like some months I will be allowed to return titles and other months the, the ability has been taken away from me. So our Amazon overlords are getting very, very picky about that program. So I'm going to recommend not using and abusing that part of it um, because they will ultimately like block your account if you abuse the system. Um, but there is an option to return books if something is wrong with it or if you really don't like the book. You can do it a few times, um, but just don't do it every single title. Like don't be like the person who like listens to a book, returns it, gets a new one and just works the system. So that's going to be my recommendation for Audible. Okay, so now that we have moved on from that, um, if you have icky feelings about supporting Jeff Bezos and, uh, you know, the Audible overlords that rule the world at this point, um, Libro FM is an alternative program that I absolutely adore. So they have almost an identical selection of titles. Their catalog is top tier. They have brand new releases. They have exclusive titles. But not only is it not supporting Amazon, you specifically get to choose what independent bookstore you would like to um, benefit from your purchase. So Libra FM is its own entity in itself. And when you sign up and create an account on there, you can pick a local independent bookstore that will receive a huge percentage of every single credit purchase that you make on Libro FM. So I personally have mine set to Harriet's Bookshop, which is a black owned um, bookshop in Philly because that's close to me. Philly is my close, uh, Philly isn't my closest city anymore. Philadelphia still has my heart though. That's like the closest city to where I grew up. So not only do you have like the feel good moment of like not supporting Amazon, but you also get to support indie bookstores, which is a vitally important thing in today's day and age where Amazon overlords are taking over everything. So in all honesty, I have been using Libro FM the most out of pretty much all of my audiobook programs because I feel so much better supporting them and knowing that Harry's Bookshop gets my money with every audio sale. Like that is, it's just a brilliant program. They also have an influencer program for any of you guys who are booktubers or bookstagrammers. They do have an influencer, um, 
ALC. It's an audiobook loaning system where you get early copies to review of like upcoming releases. And those copies also go in support of whatever bookstore that you have selected on your account. So that is just a cherry on top for me personally. Um, so I totally recommend Libro. I feel like their catalog is almost identical to Amazon's. Um, and it is another system where you own the books regardless of whether you cancel your subscription or not. And I believe it's the same thing. I want to say it's also $14.95 a month for one credit. Um, and you just feel infinitely better about that. And lastly, there's going to be a new thing that I wanted to do a lot of research on before I included it in a video, but the authors have spoken out about it. There are audiobooks on Spotify. That's a thing that exists. I didn't really realize that that was a legal thing, but Spotify does buy rights to certain audiobooks. So Neon Gods, I know for a fact, is on there by Katie Robert. That's a really big book talk book that's very popular. It's a Hades of Persephone, spicy romance book. So that is available on Spotify. And I know that Katie Robert herself spoke out and said, yeah, it's legit. It's not a pirated copy. You can listen guilt-free. So that is also an option. If you happen to also listen to music on Spotify, you can find audiobooks on there that's a thing. Um, but I'm going to steer you guys away from just kind of looking for free audiobooks on YouTube because those are always going to be pirated. Unless it's a library system, finding free audiobooks is going to be extremely unlikely that they are going to be legal copies. So that is going to be my one recommendation is to tread lightly when looking for free audiobooks. It's likely not actually free and it's likely going to be detrimental to the author themselves. So those are all of the programs that I use. Um, I use, unfortunately, Audible a lot just because they have exclusive titles on there. Like most, a lot of Sarah J. Mass's books are exclusive to Audible and I, I hate it. Um, so I use Audible, Libro, and my library system, probably the most out of all of those things that I talked about. Um, Scribd and Overdrive are the only programs that have a limited playback speed. They only go up to two times speed, if that's an important thing to you. Everything else goes up I think over three times speed now for us crazy people who listen at an obscene pace. It's me. I'm crazy people. So that is the video. This turned into a much ramblier video, but those are all of the programs that I personally use and how I use them. Um, I will get more in depth about other audiobook stuff in a future video, I think, but I just want to talk about the apps and the programs that consume my life every single day every day. So that is going to be it. I hope you guys took something useful away from this video and I'll see you guys in my next one.